Well, a good afternoon, everybody. It's been a long while, hasn't it? But we're back racing, and we're here at Imola. It's round six of the Euro Formula Open Championship. 55 days since our last uh, stop, well, since, certainly since our last race at Hungara Ring. Uh, but we are here with a very spectacular event indeed. Already getting off to a, a bit of a bang. We saw, obviously, with the free practice earlier on, Francesco Simonazzi, uh, the actual home driver this weekend. It's a big weekend for BVM Motorsport, BVM Racing, uh, a 138.561 popped him to the top of free practice one. But then Oliver Goethe, the same man, the great Dane, the championship leader, came back again and he took top spot in our second practice session. He then continued the trend heading into qualifying. He managed to land a pole time of 135.954. That was done earlier this morning after a great final lap stint that uh, managed to cultivate him, earning a P1 uh, in that uh, exchange. And therefore, pole position going to the Dane. And uh, he'll be starting from the front row of the grid, pole position for Motor Park. And they were no doubt thrilled with that. Speaking to Ollie afterwards, uh, he was elated with the performance. Obviously, there's uh, a lot of always question marks when it comes to practice. You don't get to see necessarily the full runs, a lot of acclimatization for a lot of the drivers, but uh, Goethe coming out on top and he was pleased. Our current rookie championship leader, Vladislav Lomko, currently holds on to that second spot on the grid right now. And he has certainly enjoyed a very good season as well, regularly contesting with the likes of Oliver Goethe and that of Christian Mansell, who sits just behind him as well on the second row of the grid, Christian Mansell, the Aussie also fighting for the championship this season he's going to be looking to give Goethe and Lomko a hard time at this point but Imola itself what a circuit 3.05 miles that's 4.936 kilometers uh, construction started at this particular venue back in March 1950 and uh, the circuit would then open in October 1952 settled in the town of Imola in the region of Emilia Romagna and uh, 25 miles that's 40 kilometers east of Bologna as well the track named after the great Great. Enzo Ferrari, of course, the founder of the Ferrari brand, the Ferrari uh, car brand. That is, of course, the, the great manufacturer. And his son as well, it would be named after Alfredo Ferrari as well. As the cars now uh, look to obviously get themselves lined up, they've uh, entered onto the circuit. They'll be taking up their grid slots where they will, of course, uh, meet again with their teams. And uh, there's Oli Goethe, the current championship leader. The points accrued so far, 308 going to the young man from Denmark. Uh, with Christian Mansell just in behind, 239 points uh, going to him so far. And uh, the fans here are looking forward to another great weekend of Euro Formula racing. There is the team boss of Moto Park, Timo, uh, who is in fact going to be getting in the car himself next week because he's going to be driving in GT Open, the GT Open Championship. Of course, part of the GT Sport organization as well, and we'll be seeing him in the car next week when we go to Red Bull Ring. But uh, we've got a race on our hands, though, today. And following that, two more races tomorrow that we will be bringing you. And uh, we're going to look forward to bringing you those, that's for sure. But uh, Francesco Simonazzi, he'll be starting uh, from fourth on the grid, 136.544 scored in qualifying. I know he expected some big things this weekend. And speaking to him uh, throughout the weekend as well, he, he prompted uh, by saying that he did have um, some... You know, some thoughts after after Hungary. He certainly looked a lot more vibrant uh, heading out of that round. And he said himself that he needed more aggression in the car to challenge for the big positions. And he took on this man, Oli Goethe, who's starting on pole position as well. Who can forget that race three, uh, that exchange, that incredible battle uh, that we saw, of course, Simonazzi pulling off a, a wonderful overtake heading in towards turn two. But there's the fans uh, watching on again. This man, Vladislav Lomko, who's going to look to try and convert a P2 on the grid into a P1, of course, there's quite a long stretch leading down through towards Tamburello. So keep your eyes peeled on Vlad Lomko, uh, who will be looking to turn his, as I said, P2 into a P1. The current rookie championship leader, 130 points in that specific championship. And uh, then there's a hefty gap back to Sebastian Ogard, Alex Garcia as well further back, and Francesco Simonazzi himself who uh, got some serious points on the board as well. Christian Mansell starting from third, and the young Aussie also fresh back from Formula 3 as well, because he, uh, like Oliver Goethe, were contesting in the, in the Formula 3 uh, 
Championship 2. Of course, many Euro Formula graduates have, have gone on to take part in that series and been successful. We had a top three in Spa, uh, which was absolutely sensational uh, for Euro Formula Open Championship. There's Francesco Simonazzi, fourth on the grid, and looking forward to trying to nestle in up at the top end as well. We saw he, what he's capable of. He's got the pace. He's confirmed it. And just uh, a little bit of a change in mentality, I think, for the hometown hero. Of course, the Italian who, uh, alongside with his team boss, will be looking to try and uh, get himself to the top. Giuseppe Mazzotti, uh, of course, has a lot of promise sta staked in uh, Simonazzi and the car at BV BVM Racing. Freddie Lubin uh, starts from fifth place as well, does the Brit. And uh, he managed to knock together a 136.547. Has always been up thereabouts, contesting uh, for the top end of things. And uh, he's, he wears his heart on his sleeve, a very strong driver as well. And I'm sure we'll look forward to seeing a great weekend. But what about this man as well? Josh Mason, a man who took his very first Euro Formula Open win at Hungary, of course, in our last um, race that we undertook. And uh, it was certainly Mason who was the star of the show on that particular occasion. Absolutely superb effort certainly from himself it was the race two in fact that he took the victory in and uh, a massive talent who's been with the championship now in his second season and looking forward to really going to town here on this grid formation i can certainly imagine him working hard of course he's he's always got some intelligent things to say has josh mason in terms of in terms of how he wants to push his car the works go, uh, the work going on behind the team as well he is just so driven and dedicated as well uh, here we have as well car number 24 belonging to that of the mexican alex garcia and uh, he was also lighting things up at Spa. Looked to be on for a real promising result too until he ended up in the barrier. It was not an ideal uh, situation for Alex Garcia, but he's coming back with a lot more promise. Uh, he said that uh, the month's break, he thinks, uh, has done him some good and he's uh, ready and refreshed, ready to go again. And there's Vladimir Netashil as well, starting from eighth place. He makes his return as well to the Euro Formula grid and another wave as well from Vladimir. Uh, we certainly... Well, we certainly love to see those as well, folks. Great to see Vladimir back on the grid as well for effective racing. But uh, there you can see the crowds all out in their abundance, watching on as the cars get ready to go. And here come the highlights from our last round at Hungaroring. Race one here at Hungaroring got off with... Oh, well, what a blast indeed. It certainly was Vladislav Lomko who was at the front as well. But further back, you can see that Goethe was trying to contest for that second place spot. Uh, very nearly finding an ideal line, though making his way into P1 at the very start, though made his way through to uh, that particular position after a lovely left-handed manoeuvre that time on uh, Vladislav Lomko. That served up the perfect result for Oli Goethe, who took the chequered flag and the victory in race one as well. Race two, Josh Mason in sideline as well. You can just see in the background Christian Mansell darting off in behind his teammate as well. Those two got the ideal run heading down towards turn one. And when Mansell tried to force the move, it certainly was Mason who held and defended so sternly, Oliver Goethe also trying to make places as well as he challenged Freddie Lubin. But there you could see running wide as well, Ayrton Simmons uh, trying to defend against the likes of Oli Goethe. But it was Josh Mason and certainly a memorable day for him as he took his first win in the Euro Formula Open Championship. Race three. Again, another cracker, but a stop, uh, certainly for three cars on the grid. Didn't stop Christian Mansell, though, who uh, made his way down through towards Turn 1. Goethe in hot pursuit, however, and uh, as we saw the cars make their way around Turn 1, the initial stint was very electrifying indeed. Simonazzi pulled off a dazzling display, trying to uh, certainly unhook Christian Mansell after doing so to Oli Goethe. He couldn't quite stop him, though. It certainly would be Mansell who would take victory on that occasion. But a magical weekend at Hungary and it's brought us here now to Imola folks uh, where we can now see once again all the crowds All the crowds in their abundance watching on as we're about to get started, uh, certainly for the formation lap, certainly in the grid as well, folks. Oliver Goethe on pole position, as we alluded to. He starts on the front row with Vladislav Lomko. Christian Mansell in third on row two with Francesco Simonazzi alongside him in fourth place. Frederick Lubin starts in fifth with Josh Mason in sixth. Alex Garcia starts in seventh with Vladimir Netashil in behind him in eighth place. So there you have it. Those are your uh, drivers and the cars that are lined up, ready for the start of this race here at Imola. And what a well, an amazing circuit indeed, steeped in history. As we said before, 
and plenty of variation in corners as well. Elevation too, you've got to make a little bit of a climb heading up towards turn seven, which is certainly going to try and uh, you know, maybe unseat the drivers, maybe unsettle them slightly. We've of course seen them uh, try and nestle in fast laps in qualifying and uh, certainly qualifying did not necessarily correspond with what we saw in FP1 and FP2. Certainly Vladislav Lomko wasn't quite showing that sort of pace in, uh, in the practice session, but brought it to the table in qualifying when he needed it most. He looked like he was going to be on pole as well, as well as Christian Mansell, but Oliver Goethe at the very death, managing to unhook a great time indeed and get himself up on the front row. A very commanding advantage as well, which he was delighted about, as was his uh, driver coach, Stuart Hall, who has uh, certainly been working with Ollie as he always does, uh, throughout the championship. Of course, Stuart Hall has had some success himself in racing as of late, but uh, it's all on Goethe today for Team Motor Park, who are going to continue to try and chop at the wood to try and close on Crypto Tower Racing Team, who currently hold on to the championship, or oh, certainly the team's championship classification, 189, 189 points to Crypto Tower, but Motor Park currently sat on 154 points. To the championship still alive and kicking as always for the back as well we've got bbm racing who certainly have a lot of stock placed in that of francesco simonazzi and if he can pull off another dazzling display like we saw at hungara ring do not count the italian out he is going to be uh, certainly a sensation to watch we saw what he's capable of can he unleash it again what about josh mason as well can he come away after that incredible race two display at Hungary too. Can he do exactly the same here at Imola? These are the questions we're going to have answered for you this weekend, folks, starting right here, right now, here on Saturday, race one for the Euro Formula Open Championship. And uh, as they now take the Ravazza corners, Oliver Goethe leading them through with uh, Vladislav Lomko in second place. These two who have met several times. The Grand Prix de Pau winner, Vladislav Lomko, has had many a titanic duel with Oli Goethe this season, as has Christian Mansell in behind as well. What a tantalizing uh, battle we have on our hands here. Three of the top drivers in the championship standings currently sitting in the top three of the grid lineup as well, folks. So you got to wonder, there must be some nerves maybe going through the drivers right now, knowing that we're coming into the tail end of the season. Of course, we've got four rounds left to go if you include this one. And uh, obviously any advantage that these drivers can take at this point is obviously going to be vital. And uh, we're going to have to bear with them now as they line up onto the grid. Oli Goethe just lining up in his grid slot now as the crowds look to take necessary pictures. Lots to look at here, certainly with this race weekend. These uh, cars, of course, the uh, Dallara chassis, very popular amongst the drivers as well. There is the Team Motor Park, the families as well. I can see the Mason family, the Mansell family as the green flags get waved. And here come the lights, second light, third light, fourth light, and the fifth light. And it is, pedal to the metal, and it is, go, 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 go! And away he goes, Oli Goethe gets the jump of his life right now, as he can now see Vladislav Lomko, second place, Mansell in third as well, as they come in towards Tamburello. Goethe still leads, but look at Lomko hovering all over his rear wing right now. Mansell just tucked in behind, just waiting to pounce as well. They're all in, in tandem. Goethe trying to defend slightly to the inside, as they now take uh, the Villeneuve chicane, certainly now up towards the next straight. They got toast coming up next, trying to get some warmth into the tyres there. Oli Goethe, as you can now see Mansell working his way through. In comes now Francesco Simonazzi trying to tag Freddie Lubin. On the outset, though, Josh Mason might fancy a go himself as he make the climb now, leading up towards the next great left-hander. In comes now Christian Mansell, trying to usurp that of Vladislav Lomko, but it is still on top Oli Goethe. He has stretched his advantage as well. He's really starting to climb as Lomko tries to defend from the ensuing and pursuing uh, Christian Mansell indeed as they now come out through out of Aqua Minerale. They've got another chicane coming up now very shortly as well. Very short and snappy. It could certainly unseat you as they make their way down through the Gresh, uh, Greshel corners now in towards Rivatsa very shortly and still it is Goethe in front. Nearly a second back now Vladislav Lomko uh, with Mansell just 1.2 seconds in behind that as well of Oli Goethe who certainly is trying to stretch, trying to get that early advantage in place as well but what a great start from Simonat uh, trying to really impose his dominance as well. The pace that we have seen uh, from that young man from Italy, 18 years of age as well, Francesco Simonazzi, and uh, looking to try and kick his career off, certainly here in the Euro Formula. As he now makes his way down through towards the uh, next chicane. Of course, they'll make, be making their way out to the start-finish line. Lap two of 19.
19 at this point, folks. Still Goethe on top, in behind as well. Vladislav Lomko still trying to protect that P2 advantage ahead of Christian Mansell right now, in behind as well. Lubin, uh, who's made, it, made his return as well by defending that of Simonazzi. Simonazzi really wasn't keen to stick in fifth place at that point. Fancy to go at fourth. And uh, Josh Mason also hasn't left the rear of Simonazzi either. So we've got a, a real nice train of cars. An opportunity as well. I just saw further in behind Josh Mason having a go. And they are side by side as they now make the climb, heading out of Tosa. And they've got the Puritana coming up next. But Simonazzi, excellent defensive effort there, trying to hold off the force. It was a very late move for, for Mason, but certainly unlocked the door and very nearly handed him uh, certainly a promotion in positions. Very nearly made his way up from six up into fifth. Simonazzi, he said no. He said, absolutely not. I'm holding on. And a great show of defensive efforts there from Simonazzi. And that is exactly what he's capable of as we now watch the cars come through the chicane now. Goethe still leads. Lomko second. Mansell third. Lubin still in fourth. Simonazzi must be just slightly sweating a little bit. Just seeing then Josh Mason try and unlock the door to potentially go for that move. It might well have just uh, seen him drop a, maybe a couple of tenths. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled, folks. As now we're seeing him. Doesn't look like it's hurt Simonazzi at all. He is still relatively close behind Lubin and uh, making his way down through to start the next lap. Of course, we just had lap two of 19. We're going to be commencing lap three now as well. Goethe still in front with Lomko. Well, I believe has actually managed to... Well, he's been working hard to try and get that time gap brought back in. He was faster than Goethe on that last lap. And uh, the gap now sits at around a second. It's coming in slightly now, just under a second now, with Mansell just locked in behind two. Lubin in fourth still. Simonazzi three tenths in behind that of Freddie Lubin as he look, tries to look to get closer and closer as they now make their way through the Villeneuve chicane and uh, up through towards the Tosa left-hander as well. The BBM racing team must be uh, delighted with the start that Simonazzi had, obviously showing that little bit of aggression that we were, uh, that he was laying claim to uh, from last time at Hungary. He uh, tried to uh, sort of unseat Freddie Lubin very early on and take his position as well as Goethe now comes around the next left-hander. Very, very fast-paced corner here at Imola as he now cascade through the Piratella. They have got uh, certainly Aqua Minerale coming up next. And, uh, very, very uh, easy on the brakes you need to be around here. Maximise your control of the car as well. And uh, tents can be won or lost at that particular portion of the circuit. So they make their way into the next chicane. And uh, they will have Rivazza 1 and 2 coming up next as well. And it's going to be next on their list as they round the next left and right. Just a little kink in the circuit. So now we can see the cars make their way down through towards the next double left. Still Goethe holding on to an advantage now. He stretched that advantage again. Uh, it's actually gone out to 1.2 seconds at this point. So he is really starting to push. Mansell in behind as well in third. Doesn't want to leave the rear there of uh, Vladislav Lomko. Of course, the slipstream very effective here in Euro Formula as well. And uh, we've seen many a great overtake in this championship. Josh Mason uh, needs to try and get close to Simonazzi. Simonazzi, though, closer this time to Freddy Lubin. So a huge chance for potentially for Francesco as they head in towards the next game. Fastest lap for Oli Goethe on that occasion. A 137.800 gives him the fastest lap so far. There's now Simonazzi looking very quick heading out of Tamburello. He's going to take the uh, next chicane as well at Villeneuve. Lubin's got to do absolutely everything possible to hold back the very, very fast Italian as they now head up through now towards the next left. You just saw there Lubin defending the inside line. We saw Josh Mason opt for that move earlier on. He saw an opening and uh, went for it. Of course, uh, Lubin doesn't want to uh, hand Simonazzi the same effect, but that BBM car is looking so, so quick as they head through towards the very fast left of the Pirates as well as they make their way down now on lap four of 19. There you can see it now, Simonazzi having a look down. Not surely, not through Aqua Minerale, as now we see Simonazzi side by side, force the issue. He's through. Certainly Francesco, what another dazzling move from the Italian. He's up into fourth place, and he certainly did go for it. That's the, that's the aggression he's been talking about. He is now up into fourth. A great move from Simonazzi. Just gets a little tail happy heading out of that chicane as well, but he will be delighted. He'll be thrilled with that effort. I can imagine his team boss as well, Giuseppe Mazzotti, will be giving a little bit of a golf clap 
after that particular move on lap four of 19. Great stuff indeed as they now make their way through the next double left-hander. Still Goethe leads the way, though. Let's take a look at the replay. This was the moment. Simonazzi, he just saw the gap. He went for it. He tucked inside, held the inside line as well. There was nothing Lubin could do. He had to concede the position. And Simonazzi, rising out of Aqua Minerale, sees himself up into fourth. We've got more moves further back as well as we see uh, Alex Garcia looking to have a go this time on Josh Mason heading through in towards Tamburello. Still Mason, though, hanging on. And uh, the Crypto Tower dri driver doing absolutely everything to hold back the, the tirade. That is Alex Garcia as they head down now in towards the next chicane. Oliver Goethe again with the fastest lap, a 137.525 currently to his name. Again, pulls out a little bit more of an advantage ahead of Ladislav Lomko in second place, who has got Mansell. Uh, certainly in behind him, albeit though, Lonko doing well to uh, marshal a good deficit between him and the Aussie as well. Lord Mansell currently sat in third, uh, Simonazzi now in fourth. He's got a little bit of work to do to close up to the top three, but uh, this has been a great response from, uh, from Francesco, certainly from where he started in qualifying, of course, qualified uh, fourth fastest, but uh, of course, Freddie Lubin getting him at the start. Simonazzi doing very well to get that position right back and reasonably quickly too, as now the cars come through the chicane next. Josh Mason now also getting closer to Lubin too, so you do wonder whether uh, Mason might fancy his chances as we work our way through the uh, next portion of this circuit here on lap 5 of 19. And uh, the interval starting to stretch between the top three as well. 1.9, nearly two seconds uh, for Oli Goethe as we get uh, a little bit of an update. Oli Goethe under investigation, more than one change of direction. Uh, so maybe observing to that of the, uh, the tie warming. Obviously, we'll uh, keep you updated, folks, with, uh, with the decisions that are made. But certainly, he is the fastest man on track right now. Currently holds the lead. And uh, 1.9 seconds to that of Vladislav Lomko. Mansell in third. And uh, starting to really work to try and bring that delta down as well. He slipped out of the, the second gap between him and Lomko. And uh, that has since gone back out again. But Mansell trying to do his best to bring that back in now. As uh, Simonazzi sits in fourth. The, the battle between Lubin, Mason and Garcia is starting to develop as well as the three cars start to come together. You can see them uh, in picture now as uh, Mason tries to get closer to Lubin. Heading up through to the Tosa left-hander. Just uh, running maybe slightly wide there, Freddie Lubin. Uh, hasn't upset his chances too much there. Went a little wider over the curve, but he's OK. So they make the climb of the uh, highest point of the elevation. Where they'll then come around Piratella as well. And uh, good showing indeed from... Josh Mason, last time out in Hungary, tell you what, he must feel absolutely elated. It's been a long time coming as that race win has been uh, part of the championship for quite some time, but to bring it all back at Hungary, of course, he's had uh, positive points finishes in the past, but all, always that saluted him is that particular race win, and he was thrilled to receive it as well. I saw him in the paddock afterwards, he was elated. And uh, certainly has come into this weekend full of beans, looking forward to get stuck back into it as well. A lot of these young guys with great ambitions, we alluded to before, many of them going on to become great drivers in the future as well, already being great drivers here in the Euro Formula Open Championship. Of course, we alluded to the fact that uh, the likes of uh, Felipe Drogovic, Liam Lawson, uh, as well as Jack Duhan as well, the top three on the Sunday session of spa Francorchamps. And uh, also Liam Lawson and Felipe Drogovic doing a 1-2 on the Saturday as well. So it was a bumper weekend for the Euro Formula Open Championship. Of course, Drogovic was the 2018 champion uh, all the way back then with 14 race wins and not to mention two P2 finishes as well. So what a career uh, he had. It's certainly a, a great season here at Euro Formula. As we now see the cars make their way down through towards the next chicane. Still now, Oli Goethe on top. Another fastest lap for the Great Dane, a 137.498 as he looks to get more and more comfortable with the car, and there you can see him, of course, in the familiar Rothko livery, and that has certainly dominated this season so far. Top of the cha top, top of the championship, 308 coming into the weekend. It looks like he could be coming away with another bumper, 25 points if he can keep this up. Not to mention uh, the extra um, for the for the hard work that he's issued in the in terms of the fastest lap so far. If he can bring it home, that'll be a huge benefit to Goethe as he heads up through now towards the next chicane. And uh, still has Christian Mansell chasing him. The gap, actually, if you look at it, not that too far apart if you look at the championship standings, because, of course, we still have four rounds left to go here in the Euro Formula Open, and the positions of the championship can, can simply change so easily. It is so competitive, certainly here uh, in this particular event. But as we're now watching, the cars make their way through the next left now, out to Ravazza 1 and 2. 
And there you can see none other than Christian Mansell looking to try and chase now Vladislav Lomko, the Grand Prix de Po winner of this very season. And uh, he would like to follow it up with some more wins as well. Lomko, of course, a consistent regular uh, up at the top time and time again, has certainly stamped his authority in the Rookies' Championship. And uh, a very, very talented young man as well. And uh, as well as Christian Mansell, who is in behind him as well. Great to see the, t the title contenders all thrashing it out at the top end. As now we see further back as well, certainly Ch Francesco Simonazzi trying to pull away from Freddie Lubin. So when you see the cars come through the next left, very, very rapid. Uh, certainly this track at Imola. Need to take great care over the curbs as well. One wrong move and you can find yourself unseated. And that's uh, certainly not a place you want to be, uh, that's for sure. As now the cars make their way out now. There you can see Lomko. For the back, Simonazzi, who's done a great job now, start trying to bring, roll back the time, or bring the, well, sort of rein the time back in against him and Mansell. Uh, Mansell now just a second in behind that of Vladislav Lomko. Simonazzi trying to do his utmost to close the gap to, to Christian Mansell, who currently sits in third place. He's just lost a little bit of time, though, two tenths near enough between him and Lomko. Uh, since we last checked prior to the sector, there's now head through the next split. And uh, they've got another chicane to take, Lomko, you can see in second place, just playing with the steering wheel, trying to find the traction on the outset of, of that very, very quick chicane. Very quick and nimble indeed. There is Goethe, down through Ravazza 1. And you'll then eventually take Ravazza 2 as well, with Lomko in hot pursuit as well. It's now gone out to three seconds now. Goethe stamping his authority here at Imola. And uh, has very quickly discovered the pace that he's needed in order to cultivate a race win as well. There is Vladimir Netashil also coming through as well and, uh, for effective racing. He's got a little bit of time to find now on Alex Garcia. But uh, there you can see the team just watching off in the garage too. As, uh, you can now see Goethe heading through the... Next chicane, Tosa will be next on his list very, very soon as well, as uh, he now enters his way through towards Villeneuve. And uh, Goethe, as I alluded to you before, several race wins this season. Of course, couldn't quite come away uh, with race wins in race two and race three. That, of course, went to Josh Mason. And uh, then, of course, Christian Mansell as well. Hungaroring, he got the one, and uh, that was race one. Uh, that followed, obviously, a huge effort at Spa, the, the, the race weekend prior, uh, where he would go on to win multiple events uh, on that particular occasion. So it was a wonderful weekend for Goethe then, managed to get himself a bumper load of points. That would certainly help him solidify his position towards the top of the championship that weekend. But uh, we know how things can change, certainly when it comes to motor racing. Uh, he could be winning this weekend, but then the next weekend could be a different story. And uh, certainly Christian Mansell has shown that to be true. And uh, also as Vladislav Lomko as well, all of them very tenacious characters, young men with a lot of drive, a lot of attitude that certainly uh, cultivates them being race winners. As now we see a replay, this is uh, Vladimir Netashil coming through the chicane, just flicking out that rear, oh, he spun it as well. A spin for Netashil, and uh, luckily enough it hasn't fallen into the into the gravel traps. Certainly, you've got a lot of danger of that here at Imola with gravel traps. Once you get locked in there, very difficult to get your car back out on track. But uh, Netashil did well to try and keep hold of the car. Unfortunately, couldn't keep hold of it in the sense that he could continue driving, but uh, did enough to make, make sure it didn't enter the grass or onto the gravel traps. So he did well. Yellow flag still raised. He still hasn't got going, though, and Goethe has caught up with him already. Goethe now heading his way through. Uh, good job by Netashil in order to get the car back underway. Didn't trouble Goethe too much, and I think, if anything, Goethe would be pleased that he's managed to clear and get through before he even had to worry about blue flags. So a great display there from Goethe. Again, using that initiative, get himself clear of the, of the car that had spun. And uh, Netashil back on his way as well. Further back, Lomko has got to make his way through, already getting past that of the effective racing car. So is uh, Mansell, as well as Simonazzi in behind as well. More cars making their way through too. So there's the BVM car now rising up through in towards the Piratella. And uh, he'll then streak his way down through towards Aqua Minerale. Big home race, as I said before. BVM Racing were hoping to get big points this weekend. And uh, as I said before, do not count out Simonazzi, especially after what we saw at Hungary. We saw a dazzling overtake earlier on that he managed to pull off on Freddie Lubin. And uh, there you can see the garage watching off. So Simonazzi makes his way through the next chicane. And now down through towards what will be Ravazza 1 and 2. Well, they'll finish lap 10 of 19 before then commencing lap 11 of 19. And, uh, very, very rapid circuit indeed. Down through towards Ravazza now into the first one. Breaking in just after the 100 board. And 
and uh, just very careful not to run over the gravel trap at all there. Simonazzi looking ever present uh, or ever present in his car, trying to rein the gap between him and Christian Mansell. And uh, he's got to do quite a bit of work to pull that back in. But 2.4, it's a lot better than where he was before. So he is starting to find a little bit of time as uh, Francesco. Goethe has managed to steadily uh, maintain that gap between himself and Vladislav Lomko at three seconds. So a chance for him to obviously uh, put some care into those tyres. And uh, there you can see the comparison between Goethe and Lomko. Plus four tenths of a second. Well, minus if you want to consider the, the differential. But uh, that's the difference between Lomko and Goethe right now. And uh, the pace certainly in the hands of the Great Dane at this moment in time. Mansell in third. And, uh, Francesco further back as well. As they now look to work their way through the Piratella. And, uh, there's Lomko coming down through towards the next double right-hander, of course, this being the part of the Aqua Minerale section of the circuit. They're making the climb. Again, up through the elevation, heading down towards the next chicane, which Goethe is now taking. And uh, there you can see him behind as well. Mansell starting to creep over the hill as well is the Aussie. And there's Simonazzi, who is uh, certainly trying to pull himself back in as well. He said before that he's... He's got the pace, he's very experienced, very uh, well adjusted to Imola as well. And, uh, the drivers have certainly made it clear that acclimatization is certainly of the essence uh, where it comes to Imola. And uh, a lot of these drivers haven't raced here before as well. Of course, Oli Goethe has, uh, obviously Josh Mason has as well, but a few drivers haven't yet raced here. So there was huge question marks, obviously, uh, obviously as, as to the performance of a few of them, as now Josh Mason makes his way down through the start-finish straight. And uh, he has got Freddie Lubin ahead of him as well. Tries to get into the slipstream, get himself some straight line speed heading through towards Tamburello. He might be able to get it, you know, as he makes his way through, getting closer and closer to the back end of Lubin's car as they head into the next chicane. And, uh, still, at this moment in time, Lubin with Mason in hot pursuit. They head out to Tamburello now. They've got another straight to take before they then uh, tackle the Villeneuve section. And uh, then they'll be making the climb up through Tosa, where, of course, Mason tries to execute that move previously as well. Of course, uh, it was battered off, and Simonazzi was able to defend it. It was a good effort, though, from Mason. Again, showed a little bit of tenacity on his part as well, as he looks to make the climb, leading up towards the Piratella corner as well, as they now look to fly through it. It is still looming, holding on to that fifth place, but Mason starting to chop at that wood now. That delta really starting to come down as they enter Aqua Minerale. And uh, up through this next right as well, before they then enter another quick chicane. And obviously, you want to maximize your pace out to this particular section because it could tee you up for a potential move down in towards Ravazza as well. If you're not quick enough on the exit of this particular chicane, and if you can get some straight line speed, you could very easily find yourself. Uh, getting the overspeed to work for you and therefore making a, a successful move. And there you can see Lubin now look, getting closer and closer to the front wing there of Josh Mason as they head in towards the next double left-handers of the Ravazza Benz. And they'll commence their next lap as well. Still Goethe leads, holding on now to a four-second advantage at this point. Just saw him going past my commentary box window, flying down towards Tamburello, as is Vladislav Lomko, as we now see the battle ensuing now between Mason and Freddy Lubin. Lubin still doing enough, though, to hold off the Brit, as uh, he ha now heads his way through the next left. Mason now currently sat in that sixth place, would very, very like, very much like to get himself promoted up to a P5 place as they come through Tamburello again, now through towards the next straight. Very very, very shortly. And, uh, both of these British drivers, of course, Frederick Lubin making his way now through the Villeneuve chicane and then up towards Tosa. Mason still trying to edge closer and closer. Mason might decide to maybe adopt a different strap, maybe try and uh, unhook Freddie Lubin a little bit, just uh, offer himself up an opportunity, open up the door a little wider for himself uh, so he can uh, improve his points commanding, certainly here in this race. So now you can see the Piratella bent now in all its grandeur. Got to be careful not to venture onto that gravel trap. You will struggle to get out of it as they head in towards Aqua Minerale. Again, again sorry, as uh, Freddie Lubin looks to power his way out. Of course, Mason now just tucked in behind, trying to get closer and closer. And uh, urges car. Certainly close to the mark so he can make a, or execute a move here on Frederick Lubin. And they make their way down through towards the, well, the final two bends here on this lap. And uh, down through towards Ravazza. 
It's still at the moment Freddie Lubin in fifth. The gap between Lubin and Simonazzi, you do wonder whether Lubin is adopting more of a defensive mindset at this point because, of course, he's got Mason coming at him here at this point. Does not want to let off because, uh, of course, Lubin will want to maximise his points advantage. Goethe now making his way through the Villeneuve section as well, very shortly, coming out of Tamburello. And uh, as he now looks to skyrocket his car through, absolutely flying at the moment is Oli Goethe. Of course, he's had the fastest lap since lap seven, the 137.073 going to his name as well. And that is a distinct second uh, quicker than that of Vladislav Lomko. Uh, well, certainly Vladislav Lomko's last lap, which was a 138.402. And uh, Oli Goethe lapping a second quicker uh, than that of his, well, certainly his uh, competitor in behind as well, Mansell who's also got Simonazzi breathing down his neck. Now, look at the time gaps here. Simonazzi, as I alluded to, was chopping at the wood, looking for a podium. He is now bringing it in once again, and uh, he's gone green in several of them as well, between three to four tenths of a second faster uh, than that of Christian Mansell as well. So really starting to nestle in some big laps. In fact, Simonazzi, uh, much like Goethe, was in the 37s as well, only a mere five tenths of Goethe's time. So therefore, after Mansell's last lap of a 38.107, continues doing those two to three to four tenths a lap that is certainly going to go a long way to him getting himself a podium he's still got five laps of magic available to him here at this point we're in lap 14 of 19 as now he heads through the Ravazza corners if he can get himself teed up get himself some slipstream similar to that of Josh Mason uh, who we saw earlier on we can certainly see this BBM car finding its way onto the podium Mansell has got to do everything he can to hold back the force of this Italian Chris, Christian Mansell for second in the championship right now. Here's a replay. And this is Simonazzi getting through the next left as well. Just look at that car control, needed it as well. The car just getting away from him slightly. That is just a, a statement as to how quick he is going out there, Mace. And speaking of quick, he's starting to really close up on Frederick Lubin as well as they come through this next segment of circuit. They've got another straight to take. Oliver Goethe, another fastest lap for 137.032. As now we see the cars make their way in towards the next chicane at Villeneuve. Still Lubin holding on, though. Mason again, a twist of the wheel, trying to maintain the grip. They really do let fly. Mason, though, had a look to the inside, showing in the mirrors there of Freddie Lubin. Again, just making it, letting him know, I'm here, I'm here to fight. I want to challenge, I want that fifth place. As now Mason now makes his way through the next left now. They've got Piratella as they undertake it now. They've got Aqua Minerale coming up next. Now, could he pull off something similar to Simon? earlier on because we saw that beautiful move around Aqua Minerale as well as we see them make the climb now up through the high elevation point once again and certainly Mason with every chance here to make a successful move here on Frederick Lubin as they come through the next chicane just rumbling over the curves now Again, not to get too stuck into those sausage curves we've seen it time and time again in the past that uh, cars can certainly get unseated by those uh, particular sausage curbs. You do, certainly don't want to damage your front wing or the suspension for that matter as you now see the cars make their way into the Ravazza corners. But uh, Freddie Lubin doing enough to defend here against the force of Josh Mason as they now head down to commence yet another lap. Curtis still leads. 6.7 seconds now. The advantage really stamping his authority in this race right now. But uh, Josh Mason working so, so hard to try and usurp that to Frederick Lubin as they make the move down through towards uh, Tamburello. And uh, you can just see them getting closer and closer once again, getting onto that rear wing, Josh Mason. He does look to have the pace heading into the middle sector. So whether he needs to try and get something done at that portion of the circuit, obviously it looks, looks like by the time they get to sector three, Lubin is able to try and withstand the force there of Josh Mason, which is probably why we saw Mason try to have a go around Tosa. Because now we see them coming together again. He looks down to the inside of Frederick Lubin, keeps him guessing once again. Uh, but Lubin very, very much aware of what Mason's trying to do, trying to defend to that inside as best he can. But we saw Mason there just almost trying to sell the dummy as they make their way in towards the Piratella once again. Lubin still, though, holding on to fifth. This battle is starting to get very, very tense indeed as they come through. This next double right-hander, Aqua Minerale, now as they ride up through the next elevation point. It's still currently at this time Lubin, but Mason not letting him go whatsoever as he now looks once again to the inside as they come through the chicane. Probably wouldn't recommend overtaking their man, uh, Josh Mason, as they head through this next second of the track, but it just goes to show his sheer determination in wanting to try and execute at this point as they head down through towards Ravazza. And you do wonder, coming out of the Ravazza bends, he'll have every chance of unlocking the door heading down the long straight as they do make their way through. 
They'll be starting their next lap very shortly. Indeed, Goethe is still pulling out more and more of an advantage as time goes on. Mansell as well, also trying to uh, defend against Simonazzi, who is not far away. Approximately a second in behind that of Mansell is now Mason, once again trying to get into that slipstream. Goethe uh, now makes his way through. This is our current race leader, the Great Dane. And uh, as I said before, leading the championship after a very successful run at Spa, the race win at Hungary. Tell you what, he looks in great form, looks like he's in great spirits to take another victory here at Imola as well. And uh, you'll welcome this return, that's for sure. As we're now watching this battle ensue again, you can just saw Mason just getting a little bit upset in the car there. You just saw the, uh, the, the grip level just maybe not working for him at that point. Maybe he threw it into the corner a bit too aggressively as you now see him uh, trying to work so hard to close up now on uh, Freddie Lubin, who's in front of him. He's done well to withstand the force as Freddie Lubin as they head through the next fast left hand the Piratella and uh, Mansell has once again got Simonazzi breathing down his neck six tenths now just between Mansell and Simonazzi could we have a last lap for the drama here at this point could there be a change in the podium place because look at Simonazzi now very very close to the back of Mansell's car this could be a huge moment in this race certainly one for Francesco to remember as they head down now in towards Ravazza 1 and uh, you can just see there's the gaps they've certainly come right right down he's chopping at that wood and Mansell trying to do his best to keep him at bay you can just see his mother there Megan Mansell of course trying to wish her son on wish Christian on there you can see Simonazzi though to the inside just see that alternate line for Christian Mansell trying to yet again defend against the Italian who makes his way down through towards the next chicane of Tamburello as they do so Tell you what, Francesco might actually smell an opportunity here at Imola as they work their way through and through towards the next straights as well. They'll then be taking the Villeneuve Benz, and uh, certainly, by the looks of it, Simonazzi primed and ready. Could he do it again like he did before? Could it be Aquaminerale? Might he choose Tosa? We'll have to wait and see. It could be the next home straight. We'll have to wait and see, folks at home. It certainly has been a clinic. And uh, a last lap of drama wouldn't go amiss, would it, at this point, as we're now watching the cars make their way up the hill. We've got Piratella coming up next, Crystal Lonco in picture as well. He, of course, holding on to that second spot, which you'll be absolutely delighted with as they now head down through towards the Aqua Minerale. And uh, there's still Mansell in third. Simonazzi still in fourth, trying to work hard to try and close the gap. Four tenths now is all that stands. Simonazzi really trying to uh, bring a glance. Grand Slam, Grand Slam finish to this uh, race here, race one here at Imola. And uh, now we're heading down through towards the Rabatza Benz as well. Got uh, the final two main corners on this particular lap, and Goethe is going to take them round on another one as well. And uh, certainly Mansell still in third though. Gap now slowly going out again, three tenths. Maybe now Mansell trying to push the gap out, maybe trying to hold on as Goethe commences the final lap here at Imola for race one. And there he is, our race leader, doing absolutely sensationally right now. And another fastest lap to boot. We're in the 136s as he now sets a 136.960. So a wonderful lap indeed from Oli Goethe, uh, who once again shows his race winning uh, form, certainly to say the least, as he works his way through the next chicane. Uh, makes his way now up through towards Tosa for the final time here in this race. And uh, he'll then venture up through towards the Piratella. Of course, his last few laps, 37.070, 37.283, 37.398. Just been progressively getting better and better as time goes on. His last lap being the best one, though. And uh, he's certainly getting more and more comfortable with the circuit as he does go. Obviously, getting the tyres up to op optimal temperature helped too. There's been a lot of talk about tyres in and uh, heat levels at this particular track, but uh, certainly currently sitting at 37 degrees at this point is the circuit of Imola, as he now comes through the next chicane for the final time in on race one. He'll then take Ravazza very, very shortly, one and two, before he then takes the chequered flag, but it's certainly all smiles, I'm sure, in the motor park garage, as now it certainly looks to be Oliver Goethe heading through the second to last corner. He'll take the final corner at Rivazza as well. He's got another little kink in the bend as well. Just rubs the gravel, but it won't deter him as he heads up towards the line. It certainly will be Oli Goethe. He takes the
the chequered flag, the spoils in race one. Oliver Goethe is your winner in race one here at Spa, uh, here at Imola, sorry. As now we're seeing more cars come across the line. Lonco comes in second place. Christian Mansell in third as well, with Simonazzi very close to him. A great drive from Simonazzi, considering what he started off with. Moving his way up, that's for sure, into fourth place. Freddie Lubin doing enough to hold off the attack from Josh Hayes as well. A fastest lap to boot as well for Oli Goethe, a 136.938. What a drive from Oli Goethe. Once again, that race-winning form, he's brought it to Imola, and he's done absolutely sensationally as well, taking the chequered flag in our first event of this race weekend. Of course, two more still to come. He'll want to do exactly the same in tomorrow's two events as well, that, that is for sure. Oli Goethe is your race winner. Vladislav Lomko takes the second place plaudits as well. A great drive, just could not quite uh, catch Goethe in the early stages, and Goethe was able to power on through and take victory here at Imola in grandiose fashion. It has to be said, another raft of points going his way and to his championship charge. Of course, Mansell doing a superb job as well to hold back the force of Francesco Simonazzi, because Simonazzi was coming at, at him like a rocket towards the end. Perhaps very sensational effort. Oliver Goethe, your race winner here, taking victory. Vladislav Lomko in second as well. Christian Mansell finished in third. Francesco Simonazzi in fourth. Frederick Lubin finished in fifth place with Josh Mason in sixth. Alex Garcia in seventh with Vladimir Netashil coming home in eighth place. Well, there you have it. It was such a tremendous event, such a tremendous battle, certainly in the midfield, but Goethe showing his authority once again. The uh, proof, certainly, that uh, he is a champion in waiting, but the question is, can he hold back the force of Christian Mansell and Vladislav Lomko for the rest of the season? It is still going to be ongoing, of course, this tussle. We've still got more races to come this weekend, but getting off to, getting off to the perfect start, Oliver Goethe, and... Uh, a race I'm sure he'll be pleased about and I'm sure he'll enjoy reviewing it later on with his team as well as they now line up in Park Ferme and I'm sure the celebrations will be plentiful as he takes the steering wheel out further on behind as well Vladislav Lomko coming in to settle his car next to Goethe as well as Goethe fixes the wheel back in will we see the celebrations here to get ourselves back underway here at Imola yes a little fist pump, a hug with Stuart Hall, his driver coach, and Timo, the team boss as well at Motor Park. Well done, Ollie. Very pleased. Well done, Ollie, indeed. What a drive. And uh, job done, I would say, uh, as far as the team's concerned. But uh, yeah, tap on the helmet from Stuart Hall, who's impressed on the fact that Ollie has kept his schedule pretty busy over the last month, despite the summer break, has also uh, been keeping him on his toes, more racing as well. And uh, he's brought it to Imola again today. And that's another win. And uh, great to see the... Great to see that from Vladislav Lomko as well. A very, very good second place. And uh, there's Alfredo Filipponi as well, who uh, hands him across the cap for the race winner. And now we have an interview with Alfredo Filipponi and Oli Goethe. There you can see the highlights here. As we can now see the picture in picture, there's Vladislav Lomko, a tremendous effort, certainly to cultivate a second place effort. Goethe though was the man on top, a tremendous drive, a huge effort here at Imola. And certainly he's standing by with Alfredo Filipponi. Oli Goethe back from holidays <laughs> and uh, back uh, to P1. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was an amazing race. Quali was really good as well. Uh, we made a step from free practice, so... Um, yeah, no, the pace all race was really good. Uh, I managed to manage my tyres quite well, and the pace at the end was very good as well. Uh, the start was good, to be honest. I, it was just a great race. And, of course, it's quite enjoyable to race at uh, Imola. Yeah, I mean, I love the track. It's This track to drive with this car is... It's amazing, so it was a pleasure driving around 17 or 18 laps, I forgot, <laughs> around the circuit. Well, you have two more. <laughs> now enjoy the podium. Thank you. Well done. 
Words there from Oli Goethe on his uh, great victory. And here are the highlights from a wonderful race for Goethe. Let's take a look at the start, though. As the lights went out and we hit pedal to the metal, it was Oli Goethe who got the leap of his life, managed to get away from Vladislav Lonko, Francesco Simonazzi straight away from the get-go, dueling with Freddy Lubin, uh, Christian Mansell doing his utmost to try and usurp that of uh, Vladislav Lonko as well, but Goethe was the man to lead them away, uh, got the advantage that he was looking for. We did see though this beautiful move, Francesco Simonazzi into Aqua Minerale, cultivated a wonderful effort to get ahead there of, of Freddy Lubin uh, to take that position as well. Really did work hard, Simonazzi, at his home race, that is for sure. Then we saw Vladimir Netashil coming apart, unfortunately, through the uh, the next left, well, coming into the next left-hander, unfortunately spinning the car for effective racing, and he had to get himself back. Uh, the right way around, of course. There is Christian Mansell heading through the Ravazza section. Francesco Simonazzi did all he could to try and close the gap. It was a huge effort from the Italian, but no one could stop this man. Oliver Goethe, he crossed the line and took victory in race one here at Imola. And then, of course, the celebrations came through. Stuart Hall with the hug. Truly has capped a great start to the weekend for Team Motor Park. As we can now see, Christian Mansell and Vladislav Lomko, they'll be pleased with their efforts. Christian Mansell would have probably wanted a little bit more out of that particular race. We're just waiting, obviously, for the winner, Oliver Goethe, to come and uh, join in. Of course, Vladislav Lomko once again collecting another rookie win yeah. as well, which will add to his uh, list that he's accrued this season. And uh, he certainly has had a wonderful season indeed. Uh, that race win gives Oliver Goethe nine race wins this season. So he's only one away from ten and uh, has already managed to nestle, it, nestle in another pole position as well, making that five now as opposed to the four he had before coming into the weekend as well. So great display, great for the statistics for Oliver Goethe. He would love to make it ten wins this weekend. He's got two races to make it happen here at Imola. We've still got a long season. Make sure you take the fluids on board as well. As uh, you can now see the podium positions with the trophies there lined up for the drivers as well as the champagne. Christian Mansell, he comes up, takes the third step with Vladislav Lonko second. And the first place reserved for Oli Goethe. Oliver Goethe, your race winner. And uh, good display from all three drivers. Oliver Goethe on top. As, uh, we can now see him hold the trophies. Alfredo Filipponi there as well, handing out the trophies. Just also uh, giving the drivers a courtesy handshake. But there we have it, the national anthem there to celebrate Oli Goethe's win as well. And they'll all stand up on the top step. Very shortly we'll have the rookie podium as well for Vladislav Lomko's rookie race win. But uh, photos being taken of the three, the top three drivers, our first race here at Imola. And next up, Champagne, as it looked to open it, Christian Mansell very quickly ejecting himself from the from the affair, doesn't want to get wet, I don't think, but Vladislav Lomko happy to oblige with Oli Goethe as soon as they can get them open anyway. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant scenes indeed. Still working hard. Are they going to do it? Come on, come on. Come on, Vladislav, can you get it? Oli, I think Oli's had better luck, I think. Oh, no, it is going to be Lomko. He's first to it. And uh, caps a, a wonderful first race this weekend. And uh, Goethe really trying to work ferociously, trying to get the cap open. Does manage to get it out, though. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Have some back, he says. Wonderful. Wonderful spirit in amongst these drivers. Next up, the rookie. 
podium indeed. And uh, the Italian flag, you can see draped around Francesco Simonazzi, of course, his home turf here. And uh, what, it, what could have been? It could have been an overall podium. He was getting closer and closer, but not quite enough. Alex Garcia alongside him as well. And uh, they'll be taking the, the podium steps. Also, when I was just listening to a few words there between the drivers, but Simonazzi, very, very pleased, I think, to get his weekend off uh, to, a, to a big start. Of course, still some rookie points going his way. Alex Garcia comes out, takes the third step. Simonazzi on the second step, holds the Italian flag aloft, drapes it around himself, and there is the rookie race, race winner, Vladislav Lomko. And uh, more points going towards his rookie championship charge. And uh, he'll hold the trophy aloft. Add that to, to the collection he has won all season long. Very rarely been out of the rookie podium places. But it's been a pleasure, folks. Hope you've all enjoyed this broadcast. We'll see you back again tomorrow for two more races here in the Euro Formula Open Championship.